Uh, we are not just ready for prime time, we have entered prime time. The next five to 10 years are going to be magnificent. And it is pretty astonishing. If we were in a bull market for growth stocks, innovation portfolios would be soaring on the type of news that I'm uh, about to uh, give you. Since the start of the year, Kathy Wood's funds have rocketed up by 25% or more. And RK, ARK Invest flagship innovation fund, is up by more than 35% over the last few weeks alone. While everyone is focused on inflation, Kathy Wood has been betting billions of dollars on innovation. But is this a safe bet? Or are ARK Invest funds focused too far into the future to survive the present? Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. Since it's such an overused buzzword, let's talk about what innovation actually means. Innovation means finding better ways to meet people's needs. That's it. Disruptive innovation is when a company can provide much more value than their competitors, so they end up taking a bigger share of the market. For example, you used to have to walk into a physical store to rent a movie, and then return them or else you got charged late fees. Now you just stream that movie from the comfort of your own home. The innovation here wasn't streaming versus DVDs. The innovation was putting all the right technologies together to provide a new, smoother, better customer experience for an even lower price. Streaming is just one piece of that puzzle. The disruption happened when competitors couldn't keep up. ARK Invest funds are filled with companies that are finding new ways to provide much more value. But here's the problem. ARKG, ARK Invest's Genomic Revolution Fund, is up by about 25% over the last month. ARKQ, their Autonomous Technology and Robotics Fund, is also up by about 25%. ARCW, which is their next generation internet fund, is up by almost 40%, and so is ARCF, which is their fintech innovation fund. Are you seeing the pattern here? Even though these funds all have very different themes and are filled with different stocks, their prices are all moving the same way. That means they're highly correlated. And that's because ARK Invest fills these funds with companies that reinvest their revenues into growth, which means they're reporting low earnings. Regardless of what they actually do, every company with low earnings has been getting punished by investors and trading algorithms since the Federal Reserve started raising interest rates. And that's because higher interest rates make it more expensive for companies to get loans, which they use to invest in new assets or build new teams or fund new projects. So basically, it becomes harder for growth companies to actually grow, which means they're going to be growing slower, which means investors should be paying less for that stock. But this is a real double whammy because rising interest rates also make bond yields rise and bonds are very safe investments. So when their yields rise, growth stocks need to perform even better to justify the risks of buying them over higher yielding bonds. This is why ARK Invest funds are so highly correlated, even though they have completely different themes and the actual companies inside them like Exact Sciences, Tesla and Shopify are all in completely different markets. This is why it's so important to not go all in on any one type of asset, no matter how exciting it sounds. According to recent reports by Citibank and Deloitte, fine art has one of the lowest correlations to stocks of any major asset class, and 85% of wealth managers think that art should play a role in diversified portfolios. Not only that, but contemporary art more than doubled the S&P 500's returns over the last 26 years. That's where Masterworks comes in. Masterworks.com is the only platform that lets you diversify within multi-million dollar paintings without breaking the bank. Their team of analysts identify artists with the best risk-adjusted returns, acquire paintings by these artists, and then file that artwork with the SEC. Over 200 paintings so far, ranging between $500,000 and $25 million. That means every painting has to pass the SEC's qualifications. Those paintings are then securitized, which allows you to add shares to your portfolio. In just the last 60 days, they've sold three paintings, which have returned 10, 13, and 35% net to investors. Of course, past performance doesn't guarantee future results, but I'd take those numbers in this kind of market any day. No wonder they have over 600,000 users, with some paintings selling out in under an hour. But right now, they're giving you VIP access to their latest offerings. I'll leave a link to that offer for you in the description below. All right, there's another thing that most of Kathy Wood's top stocks have in common and that's their ability to solve real-world problems using artificial intelligence. That's the key technology that enables these innovations. These slides are from ARK Invest's Big Ideas 2022 report, but here's what you need to know now as an investor. AI sits at the heart of the innovations happening in every aspect of our daily lives, from transportation and robotics, to gene sequencing and cloud computing, and even social media and gaming. AI will not take your job, but somebody who knows how to use AI will. 
and that's because AI and automation can more than double the average knowledge worker's productivity. That's one hire for a company instead of two. That's why ARK Invest expects companies to invest a lot more money into AI software focused on automation and productivity over the next decade. Specifically, last year, ARK Invest estimated that organizations will increase spending on this kind of enterprise software by 42% per year for the next 10 years. All that AI software will run on AI hardware, whether it's cloud services and supercomputers or embedded AI accelerators and GPUs. ARK Invest projects that the enterprise hardware market supporting AI will grow a hundredfold over this decade, from $17 billion in 2021 to $1.7 trillion in 2030. This plot right here is why I've been so focused on companies like NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, TSMC, Amazon, and Microsoft. They're the hardware infrastructure that's going to support this explosion in enterprise AI software. And this explosion is already happening. The stock market just isn't pricing it in yet. To answer why, let's turn to Kathy Wood's most recent episode of In The Know. I've cut the episode down to just a single three-minute clip that focuses on exactly how big of a mistake the market is making right now. Then with that context, I'll walk you through an example of a big tech company that's getting disrupted right before our eyes. If you owned a technology, consumer discretionary, or a consumer uh, services that last year was horrendous. Uh, anything in innovation uh, was horrendous. Now, there are different reasons for these declines. Consumer services, of course, we have the Facebook, uh, the Facebooks and the Netflix uh, being disrupted. TikTok's a big disruptor. They're also now much more hostage to the cycle. Advertising is one of the first line items cut during a recession. And this is why we think we, we started in a recession uh, early last year, because advertising fell off a cliff. Uh, so they're being disrupted. Uh, now, in other innovation portfolios, those stocks had a, vi a very bad year. Uh, for a different reason. They were penalized because they're investing aggressively now. Uh, but the, the winners are going to be those companies that are spending aggressively now, uh, especially because with artificial intelligence, many winners are going to be in winner take most categories. Uh, so we, we want that. But when the market is focused on one quarter and wants its profits now and its dividends now, algorithms, they make none of these distinctions and they just pummel these sorts of stocks. By many of our metrics, there is outright capitulation all over the place because investors aren't taking note uh, and, and it is pretty astonishing. The market's not discounting any innovation. In fact, worse, it's not even giving uh, companies credit for innovation that is proving out that's not in the future. If we were in a bull market for growth stocks, um, innovation portfolios would be soaring on the type of news that I'm uh, about to uh, give you. Artificial intelligence, the breakthroughs here are absolutely mind-blowing. Check out ChatGPT. ChatGPT uh, is scoring better than the national average on uh, the SATs. Uh, and it's going to get better with time because uh, uh, these machine programs learn with time. And we're hearing programmers say it saves them 50% of their time. Um, so it's really astonishing what's, uh, what's going on. What we believe is going to happen is that artificial intelligence is the equivalent of the assembly line for uh, for the industrial revolution. But this is the knowledge revolution. Other examples out there. Uh, connected TV, many people seem to think that uh, TV has, you know, gone out of style, that everybody's just on mobile phones. Uh, and yet connected TV advertising did very well last year in a terrible year for advertising. So linear TV advertising was down 2% last year. Connected TV advertising was up 14% last year. Um, social commerce is taking share from e-commerce. So e-commerce was the disruptor and now social commerce is taking share. Uh, electric vehicle sales last year up 49% in the United States. Uh, versus total auto sales down 8%. Autonomous mobility, cruise automation in San, is in San Francisco. And uh, now they're entering Austin and Phoenix. It took them nine years to perfect San Francisco. It took them 90 days to move into uh, Austin and uh, Phoenix. And they did that by the end of last year. Lots of innovation has already taken place. 
we are not just ready for prime time, we have entered prime time. The next five to 10 years are going to be magnificent. Uh, and we believe that truth will win, in, win out in the stock market. Uh, as far as we're concerned, innovation today is being treated like value was in the late 90s. And uh, we know how that ended. All right. So some of the companies at the top of the indexes are getting disrupted. For example, Facebook and Netflix have both been losing market share to TikTok, which is being reflected in their earnings. But the big mistake that the market is making right now is not giving credit to the companies doing the disrupting just because interest rates have been on the rise. Investors have no idea what they're talking about when they say a big tech company can just come along and build that. If they could, then they would. These big tech giants have spent billions of dollars to build a business that returns money to shareholders in a certain way. And any company with an actual moat can't be easily copied. That's why Microsoft is buying 49% of OpenAI instead of just trying to build ChatGPT themselves. That's why Apple and Amazon are getting crushed by Roku in the connected TV market, even though Roku is 100 times smaller than both of these companies by market cap. It's why Instagram can copy every single feature TikTok has on the surface. But TikTok was still the most downloaded app on the planet in 2022. By the way, ByteDance has almost the same market cap as Meta Platforms now, even though Meta Platforms is twice as old. That's why understanding technology is becoming just as important to investing as understanding the finances. And that's why I focus on it so much. Since Kathy Wood called out Netflix, let's use that as our example. What is Netflix's goal? Whether they're spending billions of dollars to acquire content or they're paying computer scientists billions of dollars to build content recommendation algorithms, the goal is always the same, to serve you with enough content that you enjoy to keep you paying for it. And ideally, the costs of doing that are less than the money they make so that they can pay their shareholders. So how can they achieve their goal? Well, one way is by simply adding more high value content to their library. But there's no real moat there because other services can just do this too. Disney has Star Wars and Marvel and Pixar and ESPN. And no matter what content any service adds, half of us just watch old episodes of The Office anyway. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, stay calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm. But what about the content recommendation part? Netflix uses a technique called collaborative filtering. At a high level, they put you in a group of users based on the genres you tend to watch, what you put in your queue, your thumbs up or thumbs down ratings, and so on. Now imagine that everyone in your group got together and built a list of your top 20 movies. The recommendations you would get is that list, filtered down to the ones that you haven't seen yet. So one way Netflix can innovate is by finding a better way to group users together to achieve better recommendations. Another way could be by grouping content together to make recommendations based on the content that you already like. That's called content filtering. If you liked Gladiator, you'll like 300. If you like Pulp Fiction, check out Drive. If you like the ending to Game of Thrones, you'll probably love the writing in Twilight. Netflix actually uses both collaborative and content filtering to make their recommendations. By the way, what if Netflix recommended products from different stores instead of movies from different studios? That's Amazon's product recommendation system. What if Netflix recommended food based on ratings and restaurants near your location? That's Uber Eats. What if Netflix recommended songs or playlists? That's Spotify and YouTube Music and so on, at least at a high level. What's important is knowing just enough about these systems as an investor to be able to spot a new company with a measurably better user experience. A company that's recommending things better, faster, and cheaper than its competitors. A company like TikTok. The key to TikTok's global success is their recommender system. A couple months ago, ByteDance revealed the inner workings of this system. And guess what? It works completely differently from something like Netflix. The paper that they released shows that modern recommenders fall short in different kinds of scenarios. So ByteDance had to build their own, just like Tesla had to switch from Nvidia to building their own FSD chips, and just like Apple switched from Intel's chips to designing their own. These are all hints that a better solution might exist and a disruption might be about to happen. I'm still working through the TikTok paper, but here are some of the highlights. TikTok system is called Monolith, and it focuses entirely on speed of learning and speed of content delivery. Everything down to the interface is designed to learn as much as possible, as fast as possible, to serve you relevant content as soon as possible. That's why TikTok feels like it knows you from the first time you open it, while Netflix needs to date you for a little while before it really decides if it likes you. Okay, that was TikTok's innovation. Here's where the disruption comes in. 
About a year ago, ByteDance launched a suite of services that other businesses can plug into, including this recommendation algorithm. That means that e-commerce platforms can use it to try and disrupt Amazon. Music services can try and use it to disrupt Spotify. And of course, new video platforms will use it to disrupt YouTube. <laughs>